I'm Miss OCFS in 2023. Hi, I'm Riley Davies. I'm Junior Miss Orange County Fair Speedway 2023. Welcome, Welcome to, to the Orange, Orange County, County Fair Speedway. The to full fender <laughs> in the thousand <laughs> Pace truck to the inside, turn number four. R.J. Sherman and Johnny Kendall once again bring about a turn number four. We go racing this time. And again, Falanga steps to the outside and goes away. The Middletown Auto Wreckers, number two car, Anthony Falanga at the drop of the green flag has picked up the number one spot. Outside lane moving away. Here's Bachhorn in the 97 machine. Bachhorn from sixth to second, and he's on the inside. The Sparta trucking number 97 car. Bachhorn locking horns right now with Falanga in a wild drag race down the home straightaway. Uh, Drew Boniface down the back straightaway spot. Number three, Kendall back to slot number four right now. Edwards up to the number five position. On a turn number four, they travel. Top three cars, nose and tail battle across the stripe. Kendall fourth, Edwards fifth. And already, Brian Cromwell is in spot number six. From 16th to 6th for BK Spade, he's going for the number 5 spot. Bachhorn may be running the toughest race of his career. He looks over his right shoulder and beads of sweat begin to build on his brow right now. And Brian Crummel taking off, exiting turn number 2 up into the number 1 position. He may be looking for a second feature win tonight here at the Orange County Speedway. Well, now should we do a double interview with Brian Crummel out here tonight? A clean sweep night at the Orange County Speedway. Heat, feature, and feature. Not too many drivers can claim that development. Nah, that doesn't happen very often. Uh, it just comes down to hard work, a good team, great car. Uh, all my sponsors that helped me out throughout the years. Here is your race leader, Ronnie Shogger. Donnie Campbell's on the inside of Russ Nazaro. And then Moose Shogger back there in the number 88 car. Michael Giuliano back there in spot number five as they travel down the back straight away. Five cars locked in third battle, three wide. Moose Shogger tried to shoehorn his way into the middle of that sandwich. A little bit of contact being made with Nazaro. Nazaro had to back out of it, and they lock horns with Shogger down the back straight away. Well, you saw that coming on. Wow. Going to talk to us in victory lane tonight. A win for Michael Giuliano. Johnny Another win for Michael Giuliano this year here at the Orange County Speedway. And that was anything but easy. <laughs> um, you know, it, it was easy. Um, it, I mean, I'm here at the Orange County Ferris Speedway for the full Fender Nostalgia Night. My guest here will be Tim Pitts. Tim, you've been around the Speedway for a long time and seen a lot of things here. Wondering if there's a specific night in the history of your time at the Speedway that sticks out as a very memorable one or above the rest? Well, I think probably back uh, at the beginning of my career here in the uh, mid-80s, uh, probably getting to announce Carl Van Horn's last win ever. That was a, definitely a night that I'll remember. Uh, the night we got to interview uh, Chris Economaki, and in the, in the midst of the conversation, uh, it came out that Chris was actually the very first announcer ever at the Nazareth Half Mile Speedway. And I was the very last announcer ever at Nazareth. So, you know, in the booth we had the first announcer and the last announcer ever at Nazareth. That was pretty cool, just stumbled upon that. So, uh, stuff like that. Uh, other nights, of course, when, when Jack Roush was here and stuff, having fun with those guys. Uh, yeah, there's been some, some definitely memorable nights, that's for sure. Here, was there one particular era that sticks out the most to you? Well, probably the Danny and Brett era. And you know, it's just like today. You know, we call those now the good old days. We lived through them. Uh, everybody had a favorite, everybody hated one of the two guys, and we didn't realize we were probably enjoying one of the greatest highlights of the career of the Speedway. And, and you know, you sit back and you say, well, boy, the good old days. Hey, every Saturday night we come out here, we're making the good old days in racing. But yeah, that Danny and Brett era, man, I, you know, we wish, we'd give anything to go back to those days. So, 
that was definitely a highlight of the career of the Speedway, definitely. With it being full fender night, and thinking back to when the first street stock series began with dirt as the Savon series and then progressed to the pro stocks, you've had some time away from Orange County to interview some of the drivers here and their successes with the dirt pro stock tour. Are there things that you can take away from watching the McGannon brothers, Tom Cannizzaro, Tommy Cook, Billy Casquell, and how well they were away from Orange County and even more dominant in their years at the Moody Mile? Well, the thing of it was, with the drivers that graduated up into the pro stock ranks, it was great back when I had the opportunity to announce at Syracuse to see some of the Orange County guys there and doing so well. It's like you knew they cut their teeth right here at the hard clay. And to see them go up there and just compete against the best of the best and be one of the best of the best themselves. Yeah, that was, that was phenomenal. And that stuff we'll never be able to recapture again either because the mile's gone. Uh, but, you know, we had some drivers there that, that also never left the full fender ranking. A guy like Tommy Cannizzaro. I mean, he was one of the, the phenomenal full fender drivers of all time. Never went up to open wheel and still has the records and stuff today to, to show for in full fender excitement. If we jumped into the time machine and you could take one thing from any era of the racing and bring it to modern day, what would that be? I wish that the, uh, the pro stocks back in their day, the full fender pro stocks, would have really just blossomed. I mean, we always had car count trouble, uh, you know, back when they finally did away with them, and there were only six or eight cars coming out a week. That was such cool racing. The cars looked cool, the racing was cool. If we could have had 24 of those guys every Saturday night, that would have put this place on the map in a whole different category. On August 18th, 2012, you and I had one of our first long chats. It was up in your booth. You gave me some advice that night about to go further in this business to make it your own. Later that night, I was visited by Dan Barton in the video tower. Passed along some video advice to me. As I drove home that night, I passed exit 18 in New Paltz, heading to Albany, and decided to launch the first Northeast Racing videos. That night was uh, Jackie Brown, Charlie Donald, the Jablanca oh, yeah. boys had won from Victory Lane. Yeah. I want to thank you for what you did with that passing on to me to motivate me to get myself going with video and auto racing and several of my friends that I've talked to that you've inspired through the years that you've helped I want to thank you for all of us and what you've done for this sport and I cannot thank you enough for the great friend and supporter you've always been for me One of Walt Henry, 12th row, spot number 24, the 1L, this is Marissa Loudon. To the left side of Riz is the number Z28, Kurt Hunderlin. 11th row, spot number 22, the X car is Joe Morris. To the left side of Joe in spot number 21, the 11T of Thomas Frasco. 10th row, spot number 20, the 57 of Marty Van Doolen. Alongside Marty in the inside, 19th place belongs to Roger Guest aboard the 11 car. 9th row, spot number 18, the 918 of Isaiah Guest. Along Isaiah will now be the number 77 of Jay Pepin. Eighth row, spot number 16, the 12 car of C.J. Tennelly. Alongside C.J. in spot number 15, the 46 of Doug Sterling. Seventh row, spot number 14, the sixth, the birthday boy, Tyler Romer. Alongside Tyler, the 49, spot 13 belongs to Ronnie Constable. Sixth row on the outside, the one car is Mike Vigiletti. To the left side of him in spot 11 is the 8SL of Jaden Slate. Fifth row, spot number 10. The 86 of Billy Deke Jr. Alongside Billy on the inside, the double O car is J.B. Morris. Fourth row, spot number 8. The 8 car himself, a Bobby Slate Jr. Alongside Bobby is the 171 of Walt Henry. Third row, spot number 6. The 191, Jackie Beaumont. Alongside Jack is the 45 of Jimmy Heikowski. Second row, spot number four, the 4C of Tommy Salerso. Alongside Tom is the 48, Ray Tarantino. The richest race, the front row, the 07, starting in spot number two, is Ryan Modiano. Alongside Ryan is the 32 car of Charlie Donald, your pole sitter, for the start of this 20-lap Marky Travers Memorial Street Stock Feature Event. Different types of bonuses being offered tonight. We can't thank everybody enough for the generosity that you have shown towards this Napa Auto Parts Northeast Parts Group Street Stock Division here tonight. Here we come. It's going to get exciting in Middletown tonight. 20 laps, and they are up for big 
big racing bucks this evening. Drop of the green flag and already a three and a half car battle for the number one spot. Can't get him much closer than that as Charlie Donald down the back straight away, but here comes Raymond. Raymond Tarantino down to the inside. Tarantino will lead lap number one. Tarantino up to the number one spot. Tarantino the 48 car and Solerso, the solar tire number four machine. Tarantino been having a smoking problem all season long. Well, not him, but his car. Hey, he's holding up the smoke. Tarantino down the back straightaway shows the way. And Soloso right there in the limelight. Here comes Walt Henry. Walt Henry, the JBM truck repair, number 171 car to the outside. A very successful driver in this class. First Monte Carlo in the lineup is the number eight of Bobby Slate Jr. Caution lights are on the field, yellow on the speedway. Out of turn number four this time, they'll travel. Now Tarantino was your leader. Two of the best in the business right there alongside of them. All Henry tries to shoehorn his way down to the inside. Solerso's on the outside and right there in the mix is Bobby Slate Jr. You heard he made some adjustments from that uh, dash for cash. He wasn't happy with the changes they made on the car. Well, they must have turned that socket wrench in the right direction. He's already up to the number three spot after starting back there in spot number eight. Caution of the speedway. This is Walt Henry the fourth down there in turn number two, who heads the wrong way in a one-way street, the JBM truck repair backup car. And that's going to bring out the green lights back on on the speedway. Remember, one of these drivers, all the entries in this feature, their names are going to be put in a hat and drawn later on tonight for an extra $1,000 cash award. Doesn't matter where you finish. You could be the winner of that drawing if you're just a starter in this feature. And it could be worth an extra $1,000 from Jerry Wildrick, Feed and Development Industries, and Salon Blue. Random draw of all the competitors starting in this feature. Yellow again, this time turn number two, and it looks like we've got the 11 of guest Speedway, so it'd be more than appropriate that that is uh, C.J. Tennelly in that 23 machine. Here we come, back to green flag racing action tonight here at the Orange County Speedway. And again at the drop of the green flag, four cars fight up the muster for the number one spot. Ray Tarantino down to the inside aboard the number 48 car going down the back straight away with Solerso all over him. Solerso on the outside in the Camaro body number four solar tire car. So it's a battle of Monte Carlo versus Camaro. As two of them are Monte Carlos, two of them are Camaros. Walt Henry's back there now in slot number four. Bobby Slate Jr. lurking in the shadows in slot number three. He's always been a big winner in victory lane for these events, but now Walt Henry comes right back at him on a turn number two. Henry right back down to the inside, motoring down the back straight away, two rows side by side by side. Tarantino fighting off the solar tire of Solerso. Solerso with about a headlights width in the lead step down across the stripe that time. Bottom side opens up, and here comes Walt Henry. Now let's put Jack Beaumont to the mix. Beaumont back there in the 191 car. Down the back straight away they travel this time. And now we've got any of five, six cars fighting for the number one spot. Tarantino in the 48 car. Up there in the lead step. Solerso's right there. Now the double O car in the mix. Double O of J.B. Morris has come up from the seventh starting spot. Morris is on to the outside of Beaumont as they travel down the back straight away. Good job by Riz Loudon. Got down out of harm's way that time and left all the top dogs go by. Tarantino and Solerso's in trouble. This is ugly. U-G-L-E-E -E as Solerso lost a handle coming out of four. Got collected by Tarantino from the penthouse to the outhouse goes the solar tire number four car of Tommy Solerso. 
and he mad now. Yes. Looked like he lost it on his own. Hey, could be wrong. We'd ask for a replay, but we don't have any TV or video. So. Back to action we go this time. Five laps have been scored, 25% the way home to a checkered flag. And already a lot of bonus money has been earned. Walt Henry pulls out for the number one spot. And remember, in the Mark Rutherford dash for cash, he held off great drivers like Bobby Slate Jr. right there in spot number two. Slate made an adjustment, and I'm no doubt has readjusted that adjustment after that uh, less than stellar performance in the dash and he said he was not happy with the changes they made so he's going back to plan a and that has now put him into the number one spot bobby slade jr and walt henry goes around keep driving keep going keep going walk it off walk it off maybe not well he tried but he collected Ryan Modiano in the uh, spin, so Modiano gets collected. Time as we scramble out of turn number four. Bobby Slate Jr. and J.B. Morris, who forfeited the $250 starting spot on that Mark Rutherford dash earlier, running up there into the number two spot right now. Morris, the double O car, looks down to the inside. Billy Deke is running in third. Deke Jr., the 86 car. Up to the number three spot, Jackie Beaumont puts himself into the number four spot. Walt Henry back there in slot number five. Field at a turn number four this time. It is all Bobby Slate Jr. by J.B. Morris, the JBM truck repair car. Got his eyes set on him and already coming back up through the pack is the 48 of Ray Tarantino. Tarantino running back there in spot number six right now. Tarantino trying to advance into the top five. He does so right now. It looks like Modiano may be in trouble aboard the 07 car. He is taking a swing back behind pit wall. Pat on the back and add a boy for him next time around. Okay. Racing for the number one spot is J.B. Morris to the outside of Bobby Slate Jr. The drag race out of turn number two. And Morris outgunning Slate down the back straightaway. J.B. Morris, who's got a lot less seat time here at the Orange County Speedway than Bobby Slade Jr. has, goes head-to-head -head for the gusto here tonight. Morris on the top side. Morris into the number one spot. Slate is now second. Beaumont third, Deke fourth. Tarantino in spot number five. Halfway sign coming out this time. That's a $250 lap from Accurate Collision, Pompano Beach, Florida. Dave Farber, big thank you for that $250 halfway challenge lap being issued now under the name of J.B. Morris. Coming up on some back markers down the back straightaway. Isaiah Guest was earlier. Sarah Guest is now Isaiah. In the 918 car, not quite sure if that's a driver change or what, or just a correction. Moving to the outside of the other guest in the guest household, Roger Guest. Morris takes the high road down around the back markers. Slate got to move himself to the inside as Guest goes up the outside. Guest, a lap car, moved to the outside as he ran out of turn number two that time. So Guest and Guest running down the back straightaway now as lap traffic. Field on turn number four this time. J.B. Morris and Bobby Slate Jr. in lap traffic. Jackie Beaumont running in the number three spot. Fourth is the 48 of Ray Tarantino. Fifth is Mike Vigiletti as they travel down the back straight away. Walt Henry, the fourth, is way up on the outside as a lap car. Morris in clean air right now as the leader down across the stripe. Slate second. Beaumont third. Tarantino fourth. Deke is fifth. Vigiletti sixth. Gannon seventh. Eighth is then Heikowski. Ninth is Solerso. 
Tenth right now is Tyler Romer. Eleventh is the 32 car of Charlie Donald. And twelfth is the number 11 of Tommy Flasco. Coming up on two laps to go. Two to go this time by. Slade had a peek to the inside that time, but a lap car is in front of him. Morris down the back stood away. He'll look for the white flag in the richest full feathered race in the 2023 campaign of the Orange County Speedway. The Marky Travers Memorial is now down into the final stages. White flag coming out for J.B. Morris. Started in spot number nine. Slate started in spot number eight. And the reverse order will now take place as they travel down the back straightaway for the final time. Ladies and gentlemen, we can see the smile on his face from here. The winner of the 2023 Marky Travers Memorial for the Northeast Parts Group Stray Stocks make the check payable to the double O car. This is J.B. Morris. Second spot is Bobby Slade Jr. Third is Jackie Beaumont. Climbing out of the car, the winner of the 2023 Marky Travers Memorial feature event, J.B. Morris. I'll tell you what, you only have a handful of laps as track time here at the Speedway versus all that competition behind you. This has got to be one great notch in the gun handle. Oh, yeah, it's a surprise to me, too, how well it handled tonight, but tacky track is for me. Well, you went up, guys. You went up against guys like Bobby Slade, who's always won the big stuff here at the Speedway. He's got more stickers for feature wins in that car than he's even got paint to put him on. What went through your mind when you saw him right there knocking on your door? Uh, I didn't think it was real. <laughs> and what happened, of course, earlier? We were waiting for you in the Mark Weatherford the dash for cash. We never saw you come out. A uh, fuel line collapsed on me, and we got that changed out while you guys are out there racing. But obviously, we got her fixed. Well, I'll tell you what, certainly the right turns on that wrench for that car. Got to be one of the big, biggest wins of your career. It is now. Had other uh, races, a lot of other feature wins at tracks elsewhere, but what made you decide to make Orange County your home in 2023? I had to do it. Just had to, had to make sure I get a win here at some point. Well, certainly is one of the biggest tracks you've raced at in your career. Yeah, uh, usually at Bethel or Accord, but decided to move up this year. Well, welcome to Victory Lena, the Orange County Fair Speedway, holding the checkered flag for one of the most prestigious full feathered races all season long. All right, thank you very much. J.B. Morris, ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the Marky Travers Memorial. Street stock feature. Hey, Cliff Tinnelly. How about that? A thousand bucks. That's awesome. Well, I'll tell you what, a thousand dollars. This is brought to us by a name from the past, Jerry Wildrick. He ran the 27W here at the Speedway back in the 80s. And, of course, he's got a company called Feed and Development Industries along with Salon Blue. They put together a thousand dollar random drawing you know, a total feature worth well over $13,000 tonight. Great, uh, a great uh, a tip of the fedora to uh, Jerry Wildrick and family, and a, a surprise for you. Yes, thank you very much. This is my first time running this car, and $1,000, that's awesome. Thank you. All right, great way to bring yourself back for the next feature out here at the Orange County Speedway. $1,000 richer, the random drawing, that's C.J. Tiddley. Okay, you know, uh, a lot of people give my family credit for doing this race, but... It's really the fans and the race teams, and uh, they're the ones. They're the ones in the. <laughs> they're the ones that deserve all the kudos. Uh, I like to think maybe because my son and I try to represent the racers the best we can with our photography, and I try to represent the track as best I can with our, my writing. Th that plays into why this race gets so much uh, additional money, and that's a good feeling. And uh, all I can say is thank you to everybody that donated. As always, please drive safely along the way home. God bless. We love you all. Good night.